Rebels and Highlanders from last night, folks. The sun has only really just come up since lunchtime here in Auckland. It's been a bit of a miserable night, but happy days. The birds are chirping. And uh, happy days for the Rebels getting a win, 31-30 over the Highlanders. First time they've beaten the Kiwi team, I think, since 2019 when they also beat the Highlanders. But uh, the Highlanders still make it through to that eighth spot to face the Blues at the expense of the Force whose fans, if they didn't hate the Rebels enough already, will certainly hate them a lot more now uh, for not trying to chase down one more score to perhaps do them a favour. But yeah, 31-30, we'll go through a few stats, some uh, key events, and you guys can let me know your thoughts. On this one, to be fair, the, uh, the Highlanders got themselves out to a pretty decent lead, two tries. Uh, 12 points to nil lead, although the Rebels did have one kind of chalked off when it was looking like going, uh, you know, tip for tat. But um, there was a really, uh, a small knock-on from James Tuttle, which the eagle-eyed TMO spotted like a phase before the try. So, good spotting TMO, I guess that's what you're there for. It was kind of a bit of a sad one to rob it, because it was kind of a nice try. But um, yeah, 12 nil. Highlanders looking pretty comfortable, but... Uh, the Rebels showed some kind of wherewithal to give their fans a uh, decent send-off because, you know, their hopes for the season were already done. They're, they're no chance of making uh, the eight, no matter what scoreline they finished this game with. And uh, look at those four guys cheering on the Maul try for you. Let's see on 24 minutes because they had a camera set up watching the four guys as they watched the game. They didn't cut to them towards the end, which is maybe probably a smart idea because... I'm sure the reactions wouldn't have been great. But anyway, 12-7, and then the Highlanders take a penalty. But the Rebels, Vaihu, they must have been doing their homework because Vaihu read the uh, the Highlanders' line-out play like a book. Like, he was on their team. Aaron Smith passed it pretty much straight to him. He was right in that passing channel. So, um, yeah, it goes in with a pretty, you know, a pretty close uh, 14 points to 18 um, scoreline, the Highlanders just kind of ever so slightly in front, which for them is enough. All they need is to get any point out of this game. At that, that point, they're still winning it. They've had more run meters, 251 to 151. They've had more clean breaks, 2 to 4. They've had more possession, 59%. They've conceded less penalties, 6 to 1. So the Highlanders are looking, despite a kind of close scoreline, comfortable enough if they can just kind of hold their passes and whatnot in that second half. But then um, this man, is it juiced or used? Uh, the uh, the fullback who was in for Reese Hodge, who was a late withdrawal, man, he got a pretty nice try. Uh, Billy Harmon couldn't stop him. I noticed Billy Harmon wasn't credited with a missed tackle. I guess kind of he tackled him over the line, but um, really, really good wide ball from the Rebels. They were, I don't know, maybe as easy on the eye as we've seen them with some of their attacking play this year, because at times it's been pretty ugly. And defensively, they weren't fantastic, but they were certainly better than they have been uh, in other games this season, but that also could be down to the Highlanders not being as slick as they can be. Um, Highlanders go from bad to worse when they kick their restart out on the full. Remember, at that point, they uh, are behind on the scoreboard. And then when Ripley scores on 57 minutes, it was, a uh, again, another one. I say it a lot, but if you haven't seen the highlights, it's worth going to watch because there's a couple of bobbled passes in the build-up. The dude literally bobbles it forward, but just catches it in time to put it down. Like he's, he's looks like he's blown a try for all money, but at the last possible moment, grabs it and puts it down. That try puts the Highlanders out of the playoffs and puts the force in. Offload madness. Like Elof in the build-up, the prop with the offload. It's it's legit the one of the tries of the season, and I've said that about one of the Drua tries as well. It was it was phenomenal stuff. Really good try. So it's uh, it's 26-18. They missed the conversion. But um, I think, and we've said it a few times about the Hollanders this year, when Falau Fakatava comes on, there's like an injection of pace and their attack looks sharper. I'm not sure it's always like that when he starts the games. I'm trying to rack my brain because he's not started that many. But certainly when he comes off the bench, that guy adds real impact. Um, Mikaeli too gets a line break to set up Fakatava's try. That one put the Highlanders back into eighth, 26 23. Um, like he was like dummying and getting line breaks of his own. So, um, 
Yeah, he set up the the pile one as well. So two tries, bang bang. Once um, once Fakatava comes on, the Highlanders are suddenly back to looking comfortable. Thirty points to twenty six. The lead changes again when Joey put Joey Powell puts a dink through for Tony Mopea, but that's only a one point lead conversion. Hits the post thirty one thirty, and then there's my note on seventy nine minutes. The Rebels they get a penalty. Do you try to help out the force and get one more converted try? to put the force through or do you just take the win they opt to take the win i feel like that's going to be a controversial decision <clears throat> i'm trying to put my head into the space where if it was my team if it was the blues and for some miracle the crusaders needed the blues to win a game to go through would i be heartbroken if the crusaders kicked it out if the blues kicked it out and the crusaders didn't go through I would probably take the attitude that the Crusaders need to mind their own business and get get their uh, points total up. But still, part of me really wishes they'd gone for it, eh? I mean, I understand the Rebels have had a pretty stink season. They haven't beaten a New Zealand team since 2019. The fans want to go away on a high. It's more about them than about trying to help out someone else. It would have been the, nice to see them have a crack. I don't know what the Highlanders would have done if they'd had the same opportunity would they have just kicked it out or would they have gone for a try to win the game? Because for them, the bonus point was good enough. It was, you know, it was going to send them through no matter what. So, but we didn't get to see that decision made. It was all about the Rebels and they opted for the win, which I think is the, the practical using your head thing and uh, looking after yourselves. End of season review, you can look at how many wins and losses you had beating a New Zealand team. Happy days for them. Send your fans off on a high. But honestly, it would have been nice for them to have a go. So, um, yeah, but anyway, r random situation. You don't get it that much. Um, run meters, 345 to 472. The Highlanders edged that. The position and territory is pretty even, but the Highlanders had it in the first half. The Rebels had it in the second. Turnovers conceded, 12 by the Rebels, 19 by the Highlanders, too many. Penalties conceded, 9 to 6. Rebels have more, but that's pretty low in the scheme of things. Uh, the Rebels' tackling percentage is 83 which is kind of on the low side, but for them, it's actually not too bad this season. Uh, the Highlanders are 86, so a little bit better. Um, Nick Deust, Deust the, uh the fullback. 42 run meters, a clean break, four defenders beaten, three from three tackles, and a try. Pretty tidy stuff. Mikaeli Tu'u, 96 run meters, two clean breaks, seven defenders beaten, three from four tackles. So not the biggest work rate on defense, but man, that guy is a unit ball in hand. So the Rebels season is done. The Force season is done. The Highlanders will play the Blues on Saturday. So, yeah, there we go, folks. What do you reckon? Should the Highlanders... Sorry, have the, should the Rebels have gone for it? It's easy to say yes, but then put yourself in a position where it's a rival team that you would be helping out and your team's been kind of having a stink season. Would you rather your team just bank the win for their own selves? You look after yourself? Or would you legit try to help somebody else? I'm a bit torn. But I think if the Blues hadn't beaten, I don't know, like another Kiwi team for ages, I'd probably just want the Blues selfishly to take a win. And, uh, yeah. But I'm not sure. It's hard to put yourself in that situation. You guys have any thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.